Welcome to Young Tuition. This is an informal talk on basic issues related to climate change. I hope you could mention it at your Christmas table this year. I used to trust climate researchers who published their papers on nature or worked for NASA, directly or indirectly. But to my surprising, I have realized that their claims are far from self-consistent. Today, I were going to discuss a few ideas with Mrs. Change that might have repeatedly over hundreds or thousands of times. So, are you ready? I mean, subscribe, like, share, and make a comment. Of course, you can do it after watching this talk. Let's go and have fun. Today, I call myself as、uh, Mr. Stability. I only consider long-term health issues such as weight and、uh, blood pressure. By way of contrast, Mrs. Change often pay attention to her short-term appearance, such as how many times he eye blinks and how often he hiccups. <clears throat> This morning, Mrs. Change called me from the UK. Does climate change really make extreme weather occur, dear Mister Stability? Thank you, Mister Change. I can hardly see their dependence, although this sounds plausible. My grandchildren told me their teachers said the more CO2 in the air, the higher the surface temperature will be. What do you think? Well, CO2, water vapor, ozone, and methane do absorb infrared ray, and they can certainly make the gases nearby warmer. Or re-emit the infrared into outer space, which is much colder. But the mean surface temperature is by and large independent of CO2, because water vapor can play much more important role. How about the surface where we live? Does it emit infrared or not? Depends on what assumption you select. Just like your destination will be determined by which railway you choose. Say, Fleer, the first guy who tried to explain the diurnal variation. Okay, he did first speculate some obscured ray, now called infrared ray, might be emitted by the air into space to prevent the surface getting too hot. But he also wrote. The air could act as a thermal insulator to stop the surface getting too cold, like a blanket. As my grandchildren told me that CO2 and other greenhouse gases have been acting as a blanket to raise the surface temperature by 33 degrees C. Is this true? You have asked two questions. First, a hot object in vacuum space will become colder by means of thermal radiation. But it can stop cooling once it is wrapped by air, because air is a good thermal insulator. Second, the blanket you mentioned is only made by CO2 and other infrared absorbers, which are less than one percent of the atmosphere. But the blanket I used here refers to the entire atmosphere, ninety-nine percent. Are nitrogen and oxygen gases, which form the troposphere with its、uh, unique temperature profile. You mean normally the surface air temperature decreases with the altitude? Yes, the temperature profile is called the Knapf's rate, which is determined by gravity and thermal physics or adiabatic process. It also provides a simple but effective mechanism for the Earth. To regenerate its、uh, total outgoing radiation to space. In other words, as I have proven this year, the outgoing radiation from the Earth can be adjustable by changing the temperature profile of the atmosphere without changing the mean surface temperature. Just like the Earth is under its atmosphere. To be exact, just like the Earth's body. Is immersed inside the air. What is the difference? Well, the air temperature could be the same as the surface temperature if there is no vacuum gap between them, 
which is the case in the real Earth. If there were a vacuum layer between the air and the surface, what would happen? Good point. There was an assumption made by Arrhenius in 1896. He argued that both the surface and the atmosphere can radiate to each other. So do many climate researchers after him. What's wrong about Arrhenius' idea? His model is not real, and it also violates the basic law in physics because no heat transfer could occur between objects with the same temperature. Do you mean no surface radiation at all? In principle, that's right. In this way, the surface temperature only oscillate about his long-term mean value. Caused by the oscillation of the solar ray, irrespective of whether the air is dry or wet. Without the surface radiation, where does the outgoing radiation come from? Good point. From the atmosphere, in particular, water vapor and clouds, which may or may not have high CO two concentration. Just as using gasoline, with or without adding ethanol. But may I ask, where can these gases acquire their energy for infrared emission in the first place? Wow, this is another important question. You can get your body hot and sweating by eating lots of the chili food or pepper, or you can alternatively go to a sauna to become hot and sweating. As simple as that. Yes, as simple as that. Although it is called thermal excitation. In physics textbook, wait a moment. It is often said that CO2 in the atmosphere can noticeably block or reduce the outgoing radiation by the Earth. Oh, that is based on the assumption that the Earth cannot regulate its temperature distribution. But fortunately, the Earth is capable of doing many amazing things that are beyond humans' imagination. In reality. Whenever or wherever there is an imbalance in the mean heat distribution in the atmosphere, the atmosphere would immediately react to such an imbalance based on natural laws, rather than listen to the IPCC for what to do. What did the IPCC say about it? The ICCP says it will take hundreds of years before any predicted scenario can be observed. By then, those who are in power will have safely died for at least a century. How about our grandchildren and grand grandchildren in the future? They don't care about what they have been doing. Look how many traditional power plants they have abolished. Look at how many windmills they have built. How many electrical cars they have manufactured. And how many books and、uh, research papers they have published so far? We have been in the midst of a huge mess already. Good heaven! I thought they were based on physics and experimental observations, but it turns out they are some well-dressed propaganda. Yes, the objective of doing physics is to find natural laws which are by nature independent of humans' expectation. And compute modelings. Unfortunately, nowadays in the twenty-first century, people are told to trust the predictions provided by computer models and follow the UN's long-term decisions. But I can remember in the nineteen seventies, we were told another ice age might come soon. Now we are told the global warming is coming. I am totally confused. Could you make more short talks? True. Next year, I will make more talks based on my in-depth investigation on climate-related issues. I will use a plain language to explain what I have discovered and the new progress in both theoretical and experimental studies. So please stay tuned. Thank you for your calling. Thank you. See you next time. Goodbye.